Hello Winnie Game fans, as an experiment, I have decided to squish both the hidden gems and best of the month videos into one, adding on 5 more games, so let me know what you think of this new format, and let's begin with Gestalt, Steam and Cinder, a game that seemed to be in some sort of development trouble and took way too long to be done, but a miracle has occurred and it ended up being pretty good. This steampunk metroidvania controls very well and is gorgeous, having more inspiration from later Castlevania games in terms of the RPG mechanics and progression, where I'm happy that this turned out well and will be for fans of the genre. If you love first person shooters, you should check out Exophobia, one that does have a retro inspired pixel art look as well as an intentionally limited colour palette, which I suspect might be to its detriment in this case since the look can be a little off-putting. Still, the action is great and there are fun metroidvania style upgrades for your gun that allows you to access new areas and sure is one of the hidden gems of July. This video is brought to you by Karate Survivor, a survivors-like roguelite title with a martial arts theme inspired by the action movies of the 1980s. One of the most interesting aspects of this game is that it is not exactly a bullet heaven title like its inspiration, so you are not spewing out projectiles and wiping out swarms of enemies, instead being more melee focused in which you are using your fists and feet to fight off thugs, but can also use the environment to your advantage. Yes, that means building brooms and frying pans, kicking crates into enemies, or throwing random plates and loose items at them as projectiles, which gives the game quite the unique feel. The main character has to be inspired by one of the cinema's finest due to the likeness, and if you watch those classic Jackie Chan movies, I'm sure you'll know where the developers are coming from. This is currently running an open playtest on Steam, which you can access by going to the Steam page, link in the description below, clicking on the Request Access button to join, and after playing this test version, do leave the developers some helpful feedback via the in-game survey. Of course, since you are on their page, do wishlist the game and look forward to the release later this year. There have been a couple of notable farming games in recent weeks, one of which is Ova Magica, one that incorporates monster taming elements into the farming sim and as a result, meshes together two genres which I love. It has the expected farming elements that you would find in games like Stardew Valley, from growing crops to mining and fishing, along with relationships to develop with NPCs. But central to all of this are the variety of blobs that you can raise. You can breed and raise new blobs which inherit traits from their parents and they can even help out around the farm, but the main purpose would be turn-based combat Pokemon style. While all are variants on the theme and all roughly being blob-shaped creatures, there is some variety here and overall is pretty cute and wholesome. While still an early access release, there is a substantial amount of content, including all 3 seasons, all 9 festivals and more, but only 36 out of 66 blobs, where they are planning to add the rest of it and end game content through early access which is planned for 8 to 10 months. Another long in development title which made it to release is Fallen Leaf, and I'm also happy to report that it is pretty good being a 2D pixel art action platformer that nailed the throwback look. This is similar to the Monster Boy or Wonder Boy games in having handcrafted linear levels but with a twist of having a number of playable characters, each with their own special abilities which you can freely switch between during a level. It has a world map so you can choose which level to play and with over 70, yes 7-0, does have plenty of content. There are also villagers filled with NPCs and merchants, so it's a little bit Shovel Knight-like in some aspect, along with fun platforming, with the developers releasing a post-launch patch in August which addressed some of the issues that it had at release, so if you bounced off, do check back in. I'm a sucker for Match 3 games since the simplicity of that idea can be added on to so many other genres in interesting ways, case in point being Cats on Duty. Which of course adds a side-scrolling plants vs zombies style tower defense aspect. You are matching gems to get resources to purchase cat 
towers, then placing them on the field to fight off zombies where their placement has to be strategic since it even has merge game elements where three kitties in a row results in a super battle cat. As such, this is absolutely wonderful and comes recommended for fans of both genres. I mentioned Angel Struck in my surprise releases video since I did miss out on the initial release in which this arcade action shooter roguelite title is definitely worth a play. You are battling the forces of heaven as you attempt to barge your way in, building a holy rifle and firing divine projectiles at your enemies with fun synergies and combos that all roguelites should have. The single screen vertical shooter action is quite different as compared to the platformer and top down roguelite variants, definitely being one of interest. Remember when I said that there are a bunch of farming sims of interest? Well, Far Lands is one such title, transplanting the tired city worker moving to a rural farm story to space, in which a tired worker in a bustling metropolis picked up a planet on the cheap moving there to start life anew. But of course, there's a hope as to why the planet was as cheap as it is. For the most part, this will be familiar to fans of the genre, where you have to clear weeds, chop trees and till the land in order to plant your crops, with fishing and mining as well. Additionally, you can hop in your ship to visit other planets to gather resources and looks like a great foundation to build upon for this early access title. If you're a 90s kid, I'm sure that Abathor will be of interest, a game which is inspired by Golden Axe, Rastan and Castlevania 4, being a side-scrolling action platformer but with some beat-em-up inspiration. This is an arcade platformer, so it is a little less serious as compared to the Mega Mans of the world in which our heroes must protect Atlantis from monsters and bosses. They have absolutely nailed what they are going for in terms of art, music and even game feel and does look like fun with friends. A narrative adventure game of interest is Minds Beneath Us, set in a sci-fi world in which humans are used as computing devices for AI so very Matrix-like in setup, although it does have its own twist. The player is trapped in the body of a stranger, but that same space is inhabited by the original subconsciousness of the owner, which leads to interesting narrative choices. It's a largely point and click adventure game, although there are some quick time event style action elements, all wrapped up with a gorgeous visual style and based on Steam review hour counts, the game will last for 15 to 18 hours, which is pretty impressive. Action roguelite fans, this is the title for you, since Galactic Glitch is a fast-paced one of these with fun weapons and upgrades. It has a minimalist look in which you are piloting a ship, entering into little bubble arenas and having to destroy all enemies within. The gimmick here is the presence of a gravity gun which you can use to rip parts off enemies, grab asteroids and launch them at enemies, or even to catch their missiles and to turn it back on them in addition to a variety of primary and secondary weapons. Post-launch, this developer has been hard at work, already releasing a number of patches, so I'm excited to see where this goes in early access. An adorable looking title which is quite cleverly designed as a ranger, a role puzzling adventure, being an exploration puzzle game in which your character moves not by walking but by scrolling the tiles and moving along with it, being able to wrap around the world which is the main mechanic. This leads to interesting implications in terms of puzzles as you attempt to bring items and characters from one place to the next and with the puzzles not exactly being in self-contained areas but rather are more open in nature results in some clever designs with some pretty art and good music as well. On the polar opposite end of things in terms of vibes is Conscript, the self-described World War I survival horror game in which you play as a lone French soldier in the trenches searching for his brother and dealing with enemies both of very real soldiers and rats and perhaps more supernatural ones that may or may not be there due to the combination of shell shock and PTSD. However, 
do note that it is very survival horror, so you are scavenging for supplies and having to manage inventory with backtracking after you find certain items to get to the next area. The PS1 inspired art style, while more common these days, was amazing when it was first shown off and is still well done here and apparently there is a true ending as well, so there's more to this than meets the eye. Alright, so this title kind of came out of nowhere for me since I thought that the operator looked promising and it did do decently well during the Steam Nix Festival, but it has an amazing 3000 Steam reviews as of recording and far outsold many of the other games on this list. This is a detective puzzle game in which you are the newest member of the FDI tasked with helping field agents by using your console, but of course there's a larger conspiracy within the organization itself. It is cleverly made but is on the short end of things at about 3 to 4 hours, but it's more quality than quantity for sure. A fantastic looking game which I adore the look of is Dungeons of Hintonburg, set in a similar world to our own where a burnt out law trainee visits a small town in the Austrian Alps to take a break. However, apparently dungeon delving is a thing that tourists do in this world, so you can pick one to explore fighting monsters and solving puzzles, but when you are not in them, you are free to explore the world via canoe, zipline, snowboard and more. Also being able to hang out in town and to become friends with the locals and other adventurers. As such, it is a very interesting mishmash of ideas, with the visuals certainly being one of the best that I have seen, combined with the action makes this worth a play. I found myself drawn to puzzle games in 2023 and this year's genre seems to be tower defense for me, in which Artisan TD was kind of a random pick that I chanced upon while researching the games for indie gaming this week and lo and behold it's a great one of these. It's an amazing tower defense game in which where you place your towers will affect the path that enemies take to get to your portal. With the interconnecting walls between towers and even the farm aspect being very interesting, although the game is designed in having to 3 stars a level on the highest difficulty and seems like the developers had a very specific solution in mind in order for you to accomplish that, making it a little bit more like a puzzle game. A very impressive 3D action adventure RPG is Kaku Ancient Seal, which released out of early access in which our hero must make his way across the continent to restore balance to the land. The world is conveniently split into four elemental regions, each with its own share of enemies and hazards, and feels great to play both in terms of combat and platforming along with some pretty visuals as well. This is also an open world game, so you are free to explore in whichever direction that you choose and thus have a substantial amount of content being pretty worth it at this price. Here's a game which is not in a genre that I play all the time, but I do have to give Norland its props since this medieval colony sim game is good and has a great foundation to be built on through early access. It is essentially Rimworld but medieval instead of sci-fi in which you play as the ruling noble leader having to manage your realm by keeping the people happy, navigating political struggles which may even come from your own family members, and to thrive and survive. For the most part, you can generally influence what you want your people to do, but every character has their own personality and motivations which could lead to unintended consequences. Apparently, Colony Sim fans have had some issues with the game at launch which has been quickly rectified by the developer so it looks to be on track to become one of the greats. Another surprise release which I didn't cover in indie gaming this week is Ogu and the Secret Forest an action-adventure game which launched out of early access and my god, if you love 2D Zelda games, this is a must-play. For one, the art style, characters and animations are just so charming as your baby platypus protagonist explores and unravels the mysteries of the world. In addition to combat, there are puzzles to solve, a variety of different kinds of areas to explore, and even side activities like fishing and racing 
so there's plenty to do in this game. I'm not sure if there's some larger grand puzzle like in Tunic, but it looks ripe for that kind of design. But even without the more meta puzzle layer, there's loads of fun to be had with this Zelda style game. There is a little bit of unfortunate circumstances surrounding the release of Bo Path of the Teal Lotus, a gorgeous hand-drawn metroidvania inspired by Japanese folklore in that the game is great and worth picking up, but just a few days after launch, their publisher, Humble Games, was all but shut down, meaning that a wrench was thrown into the works for their plans with regards to console ports and patches. Still, the current version is great, having bits of Hollow Knight and Ori in this, with the double jump and pogo mechanics being the things to master, since staying in the air and never touching the ground will become more of a thing as you gain more abilities through the course of the game. So I hope that their publisher issues get sorted out since this team deserves better. Publisher Hooded Horse is absolutely crushing it this year, with releases like Manor Lords, the earlier mentioned Norland, and also Cataclysmo, which is another early access release. This is a defense building RTS title where you are facing off against the endless hordes of horrors, fighting and pushing back against them to reclaim territory that was once the domain of humans. You are constructing fortresses brick by brick with how you build also having implications on your strategy since you do have to be concerned about structural integrity and where to place load-bearing columns for example. You can even build to access new parts of the map, so it's a very interesting mix of ideas that expands upon They Are Billions being its own unique thing that is worth picking up. Speaking of tower defense, one of the OGs made a successful return in Kingdom Rush 5 Alliance TD, with the developer making their name on flash game portals and really taking off on mobile, with this seeing an unlikely alliance between former enemies uniting against a new threat. If you have not played a Kingdom Rush game in a while, there are a couple of new facets like hero characters, turning it a little bit more into a micromanagement RTS where the alliance gimmick allows you to bring two onto the battlefield. But for the most part, you are still constructing towers which then spawn units into the lane as this series is known for, being a solid entry in the franchise and for tower defense games as a whole. Here's a title that you might not be familiar with that is a must play since Yao Ling Mythical Journey is a monster taming game which is not like Pokemon since while you are capturing these creatures which can evolve, combat is not turn based, instead being similar to an auto battler where you place your units then hit the go button and just sit back and watch. I love my monster taming games so it's interesting to see yet another non-Pokemon title in this space with this also having a village building aspect where the creatures can help as well. While still an early access release, people have been logging plenty of hours in this game since it does have all the main gameplay mechanics and dozens of different areas to explore along with hundreds of creatures only missing the ending and they're also planning to add more stuff but it's already one of the better releases of the year. Another release out of Early Access is Frontier Hunter Urza's View of Fortune, an anime girl metroidvania that is kind of random in terms of theme, mixing sci-fi and fantasy with airships and monsters, guns and giant snakes and so on. It has an interesting 3 character system which you are free to swap between even while in combat, utilizing the variety of skills and abilities to great effect as you seamlessly combo them together. This is most like Bloodstained Ritual of the Night in terms of visuals, RPG leveling and progression where it is possible to grind to become overpowered to crush the next boss, with the overall density of systems and gameplay making this one of the best. Developer Free Lives and publisher Devolver Digital have knocked it out of the park again, where somehow this developer has hopped from genre to genre and yet manages to nail it every time, with the all-action Anger Foot being the title of interest here. You are shooting and kicking your way through the various levels with sneakers that grant you special powers along with some of the sickest beats that you will hear in the game. 
you can feel the Hotline Miami inspiration here in the action and the die and instant reset gameplay loop of trying out various strategies, learning about enemy locations and behavior as you rapidly iterate through the options available to you, and it's just a good time. A game that you might not have seen coming is Lost Castle 2, the roguelite beat-em-up which is the sequel to a fan favorite from 8 years ago where they have managed to improve on that both in terms of visuals and gameplay. There is meta progression so you do get progressively stronger after every run using these new upgrades to take on and push through the boss to get to the next area, with it having a solid showing so far in early access and the developers have already released their plans for updates in September and October and should become one of the best as well. Watch this video for more upcoming beat-em-up titles.